The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father glory with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to week two of our Lenten journey. We continue with Jesus to the cross that will lead us to a bloody cross and an empty tomb and new life on the third day. And we continue in our journey from Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday where we were reminded of our mortality and morality. Remember, you are dust and to dust you shall return. Now in the first week, if you were here with us last week, immediately we found ourselves out in the wilderness with Jesus, accompanied by the wild animals. And though we found ourselves being tempted by the tempter, we were comforted by the truth that God is with us. That when we call upon His name and the majesty of His eternal kingdom, He comes to give us peace and to direct our path. And so as we continue in our journey to the cross, the clear purpose of Jesus is heard and spoken. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. And after three days to rise again. Now just a few verses earlier, Peter openly confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But now, now the understanding of that reality needs a little correction because Peter offered himself as a tool in the hands of the evil one. Jesus firmly rebukes him. The Christ that Peter confessed was not at all the Christ that Jesus is. He didn't come to conquer Roman rule and set the nations on fire by his political leadership. No. Nor did he justify his purpose as one in which accompanying a great level of self-fulfillment for his own well-being. Rather, Isaiah the prophet writer speaks of his purpose. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. See, Jesus tells the disciples where he is going and how he is going to get there. He said that he was on his way. He resolutely sets his course to the cross. For it is here at this place where the sins of the whole world would be laid upon his shoulders. It is here at this place where the forgiveness of sins would be won for all people. 
It is here in this place where God's eternal goodness from the foundations of the world was split the temple curtain in two so that there will be no longer any separation between heaven and earth, God and man. It is precisely in this place where the joys of life and peace was extended as a gift for all of those who will believe in the power of his saving name. But Peter... Peter did not understand this. He didn't have in mind a suffering servant, but rather a conquering king. And though Jesus did in fact come to conquer the nations and the world and to win all persons back to the Father, he came to serve by laying down his life. A life that on the third day would be raised to new life so that all persons who put their hope and trust in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You see, Peter is doing what you and I often do. He is making for himself what I might call a plastic Jesus. Peter is making for himself a plastic Jesus, that is, a Jesus of his own making. His Jesus is not going to suffer. His Jesus is not going to be betrayed by evil men. His Jesus is not going to appear weak and inferior to the Roman elite and those of power. His Jesus is not going to be ridiculed and mocked and made to look like a scared little schoolboy on the first day of school. His Jesus is not going to die. For what kind of power would come out of death? Peter is doing what we do. Peter is doing precisely what we all do, namely preserving ourselves and those we love. Though generations of prophets had been raised up to prophesy what kind of suffering servant would come to save God's people from their sins, Peter still wants to hold on to what he has. And his mind is simply doesn't calculate. It's not possible for Jesus to suffer and to die. It's not possible for Jesus to go to the cross. Will he there appear as a spectacle of mockery and shame? And so in God's holy love, in God's holy love, Jesus rebukes Peter and he says to him, Get behind me, Satan. You have not in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Now, I think it's important to note. I think it's very important to note that Jesus is not so much speaking to Peter as he is speaking to Satan, who is using Peter as a tool in his toolbox. And here's the truth. We all do this together. This is the same for you and for me. You see, when we try to preserve ourselves and think that life is all about getting ahead and obtaining a good job and making great heaps of money, when we think that life is all about advancing our careers and ourselves, when we think that life is all about stockpiling our earthly assets for matters of personal gain, we make for ourselves nothing more than a plastic Jesus. And Jesus is clear what will happen on that day when he comes back to judge the living and the dead. Those things and those priorities of this world will come to nothing. The mode of those constant affections will be absolutely eradicated. It will be lost. And it will be all forgotten. Coming to nothing. But Jesus called. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. And then the question that we all must answer, what good? What good is it for someone to gain the whole world 
What good is it for us to grab onto this and hold on to that and take that position and take that power and that prestige and this accolade and everything that this worth offers us? What good is it for someone to gain everything under the sun and yet forfeit our soul? What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? See, here's what I'm preaching this morning. If you want to find life, lose yours. If you want to find purpose, lift your eyes off of yourself and onto the one who laid down his life for you. If you want to find life, lose it. Lay down your life for someone or something else. If you want to see the power of God's kingdom released in your life, take up your cross daily and follow Jesus so that the anointing of God, the power of God, and the majesty of God's omnipotent name might lift you up in due season. If you want to find life, then follow the example of Christ himself. And surrender everything you have to the Lord Jesus Christ. Bow a knee because one day there will be a day that every knee will bow in heaven and on earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you want to be mighty in the kingdom of God, die to yourself. Rid yourself of your own ambitious nature and come to the cross of Jesus Christ where life and purpose and peace and blessing and honor and glory are yours. Like Peter, you may have made for yourself a plastic Jesus. Congratulations. Repent of your sin. This God calls us to suffer. This God calls us to lay down our agendas. This God calls us to the one who suffered for us. Have you made for yourself a plastic Jesus? Have you fashioned him just like you want him? Oh, he's non-threatening. A Jesus who doesn't confront sin for what it is. A Jesus who contours to the ebb and flow of societal norms so we have no sense of expectation or commitment to people in the church or the kingdom of Christ. That's the plastic one. But Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. The God that we have come to worship this morning is the God who calls us to follow in the footsteps of Christ. He calls us to lay down our lives for the sake of others and in so doing, gaining all the eternal riches of God's kingdom here and now in this world. What kind of Jesus have you made for yourself, church? What kind of Jesus have you fashioned with your own hands? Do you worship the true Jesus? The one who came to suffer death on the cross and the one who bids you to take up your cross and follow him. Our Jesus suffered. Our Jesus died. And our Jesus will come again. And if you find yourself today having created in your heart a plastic Jesus. Jesus says unto you what he said to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You have not in mind the things of God, but the things of man. Holy Father, transform us by the power of your loving purpose and grace, that we might follow Jesus, that we might follow the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit into the days in which we are called to sacrifice everything for the mission of Christ, for the kingdom of God, and for the lost to be found in faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.